was there anything in particular that brought you to this novel was there was any trigger for this or i think i've just been wanting to write this book uh, for a very long time mm-hmm. without knowing exactly the shape it would take mm-hmm. and i wanted it to uh, approach various themes that were mm-hmm. that are important to me that i wanted to explore in this book mm-hmm. uh, one of which was uh, the place of creativity and the resistance mm-hmm. uh, it faces from outside forces the other was really uh, the place of animals in the hierarchy of uh, life that we have in this country and the third was to understand how bereavement affects someone very young because that's something i've thought a lot about because i lost my father when i was very young so it's been something that uh, affected me and interested me for a very long time and because all these themes and i wanted pottery in it because uh, that was what was going to knit everything together and because all these themes were very important to me it took me quite a while to approach it which i did by writing shorter pieces or making notes so it's been going on a while and then it took this particular shape over the last two years okay i wanted to ask you if this is your most personal novel yet because uh, in some sense when you've written to us uh, written for us about your father and your childhood and when i was reading this one there were echoes of that thing and now that you mention it do you consider this to be uh, something more personal than the other books i think it is um, i think all the books are personal in the sense that i write about things that matter very deeply to me and in many of them i use experiences i've had but which all writers of course do uh, and then they get altered as you think about it and in the process of building a novel and here too uh, yes for all the reasons i just told you about the themes mm-hmm. that yes this is more personal in that sense because these were matters very close to my heart what i was writing about and i grew up in hyderabad and in fact indian express hyderabad was where i first published ever when i was a child of 14 they used to have a children's uh, page oh, that's they used to publish my short stories and pay me for oh, that's the first story mm-hmm. so uh, yes there are many things from my life that have that i've drawn on for this book and there are many uh, thematically there are many things important to me that i have explored so in that sense yes it is a personal novel you know there's so much of nature in your books in the sense you're so deeply connected with you could be the earth spinner in how you know the rhythms of the land you know in that sense when you what is your relationship with cities because it's not like you've also lived in cities is it a place of functionality for you or like an agent of change and how do you see the um, the current climate crisis for instance they out from your insider outsider vantage point we actually see the climate crisis much more desperately in the mountains because the climate is a real force of nature here because we are surrounded by tall trees we are surrounded by mountains tell us about elango he's also a border dweller of sorts like mishkin yeah. and yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> where where did he come from and you know i think he came from uh, because i make pottery i wherever i travel i tend to seek out potters and see them at work and talk to them mm-hmm. so it's been a long time and you meet many such people who have uh, you know traditional potters particularly in our country are hugely skilled and creative and uh, it really interested me and many of them do like elango go abroad they uh, teach people there via interpreters because their levels of workmanship uh, artisanship uh, sense of art all of that is at a very high level it's only that they haven't been educated to that level they are quite poor on the whole 
Yeah. So they haven't had those opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted in Ilango to make a potter who lived who is a potter because of the traditional kind but because he wants to be one. Yeah. His father has really tried to take him away from it knowing how hard that life is. Mm-hmm. But Ilango wants to be like yeah. uh, clay just speaks to him and he has to have it. So I I find him completely a fascinating character yeah. because of his he's also very um he's very driven he's more curious he's moody he's uh he's passionate when he loves like the dog or the woman or his horse that he's making he's very intense and yet he's chilled out and happy to be with the kids and you know making jokes with them all the time so he came to me just all fully formed like as a writer how do you react to these times in the sense that we would have imagined to have gotten better like you said that it, it wasn't like it was never there but mm. we always had aspirations of being you know unity in diversity and all of that yeah, how yeah. How, 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 do, how how do you react to our times at the moment I I keep feeling like I mean uh, of course we all feel hopeless embattled uh, you know it just doesn't seem possible somehow to someone of my generation how did we get here were we deluded all along uh, were we completely out of step all along to think that uh, that that was the case that everybody you know I'm I'm not making a lot of sense but what i mean is that when when i was a much younger person at that time it seemed to us that everybody around us wanted the same things as us which was to aspire to this kind of secular ideal that had been set in stone when we uh, got independence as a country that we were taught non-stop as kids that the cinema and art and books around us embodied when we grew up mm-hmm. and we thought that this was what everyone around us felt too mm-hmm. and now it's been a process of really feeling disillusioned and rather stupid that actually we are completely uh, you know out of step with what most people seem to want which is i i i think it is uh, futile to keep blaming the government for everything the people around me there so many people you talk to seem to think everything is perfectly okay what is going on that is the part i find more alarming even than what leaders and politicians do how did you get interested in pottery i'm just very curious <laughs> it's it's a i i've i've been making stuff since i was a, like all kids like to dabble around in mud i think i've just wanted to get be playing with the mud for ever people grow out of it i guess i didn't you worked in publishing you've done a publishing house when you're writing i'm just very curious to know do the two roles intersect are you also an editor when you're writing absolutely because i think uh, being an editor uh, of your own work just means that you're looking at it incredibly closely a number of times and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the way my own publishing work has helped me in the writing actually is to understand that every writer needs an editor because i really do think that when you are writing something you are so immersed in it that you don't have the distance you need to see where it's not working where it's clumsy or flawed or where you could actually do more so however many books i write i think i will always be uh, i show my work to three people two of them are editors one is rukun advani with who i'm married to and we run the publishing house together so he sees my uh, uh, drafts first and when he's read it and we've discussed it and so on i go back and it's not as though editors in good editors will sit and rewrite every line of your book most authors wouldn't accept it anyway if they were good authors but they would be able to give you a perspective that helps you to revise and that makes you editorially aware of your own work as well 
So after Rukun, my publisher Christopher McLehose sees it and he reads it from a totally he brings a completely different perspective to it, and uh, I show it to my French translator Miriam, who's a very good friend. Yeah. Are you always working on something? As some writers say that they're always writing. Are you also always no, writing? Never. No. I I feel very exhausted after I finish a book, and I I just don't want to write for quite a while. I need to. get a way here yeah, absolutely after that i may write short pieces for some time and just scribble notes but mostly no never.